And now back to our favourite hobby here on the internet, yelling at retards and telling them they're wrong. A top official from Japan's fisheries agency is trying to dispel concerns about marine products from Japan's northeast coast. He says the agency will make an all-out effort to inform people that the products are safe. He says the agency will make an all-out effort to inform people that the products are safe. Masanori Miyahara says radioactive substances have been detected in seawater within the nuclear plant's port since the accident in March 2011. But he says the level outside the port is mostly below detectable limits. South Korea has imposed a ban on imports of Japanese marine products from eight prefectures, including Fukushima. We will use all, uh, every available opportunity to improve the perception of the Japanese food in not only Korean market, but also other foreign market. It's another bullshit experiment. Miyahara said Japan will continue to provide information based on science. He said fisheries agencies officials will hold events to promote the safety of the products. The agency will also provide information in six languages, including English and Korean, on its website. Now workers there will soon begin a delicate task. They're preparing to remove more than 1,000 spent fuel rods from one of the damaged reactor buildings. The rods are located in reactor number four. They're extremely hot and highly radioactive. We felt that putting our users in mortal danger for a quick buck was the right move. On today's Nuclear Watch, NHK World Yoichiro Tatewa explains how the people overseeing the project plan to get it done. Workers will use a specially built crane to remove the fuel rods from their holding racks. Then they will insert them into special containers. The crane must do its work under the water that seals in radiation. The next step is to transfer the containers to a safer storage facility at the plant. Tokyo Electric Power Company operates the plant. A manager says the workers are ready to begin. The same operation has been conducted more than 1,200 times at nuclear plants including other facilities. We're not trying anything new. Experienced workers will do what they have been doing for years. But we will certainly take the utmost care as we proceed. But the current work is very different from previous removal efforts because the crippled reactors are highly radioactive. Hitosugi says TEPCO must take added precautions. This time, they have to wear gloves and overalls. We have to consider how this might impact work efficiency. But the workers have done plenty of training, and they're experienced. There are other potential risks. The team must lift each container of fuel rods about 30 meters off the ground to get it out of the pool. Engineers at TEPCO have conducted computer simulations to see what would happen if a container fell. We've doubled the wires on the crane, so it's unlikely that the container will fall off. We'll be very careful, so we believe it's unlikely to happen. But even if a container did fall, our simulation shows that it wouldn't be a serious problem. An outside expert who has reviewed TEPCO's plan says the company has done a lot of preparation, but he still cites some concerns. There might be fragments of debris stuck between the fuel rod units and the holding racks. That could force them to halt the operation or lead to something even more serious. Yamamoto also says K-1 
care must be taken to ensure the walkers are not in danger. TEPCO must be extremely careful to make sure the workers' radiation exposure doesn't exceed the safety limit. The challenge will be training and keeping skilled workers. TEPCO officials estimate that it will take about a year to get all of the fuel rods out of reactor number four. But that's just the beginning. Walkers must also remove fuel rods at three other reactor buildings. Radiation levels at those reactors are even higher, making the job even more difficult. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World. Engineers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are still in the early stages of decommissioning the damaged reactors at the site. They have been unable to directly examine the reactors due to hazardous levels of radiation. But a robot was able to get closer or close enough to discover two cooling water leaks in one of the containment vessels. Meltdowns occurred at reactors 1, 2, and 3 following the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. Engineers want to know exactly how the three reactors were damaged in order to deal with cooling water leaks. Then they can prepare to remove the melted fuel inside. The robot's camera shows cooling water leaking from two locations at the number one reactor containment vessel. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say they think this is a result of nearby damage. We confirm steady water flow today. The TEPCO official said that one of the leaks was like water flowing from a tap. The robot also detected very high levels of radiation around the area. Niigata Governor Hirohiko Izumida said NRA officials should provide a better explanation why they're ready to start checking idled reactors. The NRA should first conduct checks from the standpoint of residents' safety. That's the first thing it should think about. The NRA has to show a firm stance. The governor said for the NRA to allow the government to make a political decision about a restart shows the organization has no sense of responsibility. He said even if checks show reactors to be safe, there is no guarantee they will be properly operated. The operators of an idol power plant in central Japan are hoping for the green light to restart two of their reactors. Japan's nuclear regulators have decided to go ahead with a key safety evaluation. Nuclear regulation authority officials met in Tokyo on Wednesday. They discussed a request from Tokyo Electro Power Company to inspect the Kashiwazaki Kariwa plant in Niigata Prefecture. NRA officials held off on the decision for two months. They said they wanted to see how TEPCO handled the radioactive water leakage at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The watchdog's head, Shinichi Tanaka, instructed his staff to work out the specific evaluation procedures. But he said his personnel would continue to prioritize the toxic water problem at the crippled Fukushima plant.
By completing this video, you have proven you are capable of filming, producing, and editing your own. We expect one video from you by the end of next week.